Welcome everybody to another episode of our uh, Vision Business Community uh, podcast. I just wanted to uh, pre preempt the introduction here by saying the lady that I have on today is a personal friend of mine. She's absolutely brilliant in what she does and, and would be more than an adequate help for anyone that is looking for marketing, marketing assistance and, and expertise. So I'm introducing today my friend Sharon Williams, CEO and founder of Taurus Marketing. Is that good enough as an introduction? You're not just a, <laughs> you're not just a marketing person. You are the CEO of a fabulous company. Tell us a little bit about you. Oh, thanks, George. Um, well, I'm an English girl who was born and brought up in London and always wants to go either into the Navy as a REN officer or... Um, and I ended up, I ended up not doing that and founding a marketing and PR agency that oh Christ. Has, has been going, um, oh, I'd have caused havoc, I'm sure. Um, <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, I've been running a marketing and PR agency that specializes in entrepreneurs and tech brands for about right. 25 years. And before that I worked in tech marketing, but did a whole load of things that I failed at and was good at. Um, yep. I worked with Prince Charles Polo Club for a while. I, worked for a shipping tycoon. I was a holiday rep in Greece. Um, Ooh, I, like I started the Marks and Spencer's management training, which was so, so sought after. Um, turned down university, um, worked as a career rep, um, like a DHL, it was actually Emory Worldwide. So I did a whole load of jobs before I hit about 23, 22, 23, and then got into tech marketing and that really created my future. So I've been in tech marketing now, you know, 30, 30 years plus, but run Taurus for 25. Well, who knows where you could have been today if you did join the, the Navy. Yeah, um, I'd, still, I'd still be digging that hole and covering it up, I think, because I'd have been very, yeah. <laughs> I would have been, been a naughty wren. You would have been very good at, at peeling potatoes, I'm sure. <laughs> well, back, back then, you could only be a radar wren or a um, writer wren, which was, you know, you sat at a radar yeah, screen or that's you very were limiting. a secretary. And I wanted to go off and, you know, intrepid explorer and, and, and do exciting things. And at that time, you really couldn't. So it's probably just as well that I, that I didn't join. And then Marks and Spencer's was very prestigious. It was very well sought after, difficult to get in, yep. highly paid. Um, and I just wasn't, I mean, my parent, my parents were thrilled and, you know, I turned our university to go. I think I was earning more starting there as a management trainee than my mother was running personnel for, you know, a great big factory of Nestle yeah. in, in Hayes in London. Um, but I, I felt that I didn't want to be a square peg. Um, in a round hole, or rather sure. I was round trying to be put into a square peg. I mean, their, their systems and processes were all fine. It was me that wasn't the right, the right fit. Um, but look, I wouldn't change my history for anything. I think I had the most exciting time. I think I'm the millennial, millennial even though I'm probably about three times the age of a millennial. Um, and uh, and I, love, I love my life. I love my job, love my company. Yeah, and and it's great. I mean, you you've obviously you obviously now you commentate, you you do uh, rounds of speaking engagements. Um, you know, you're not just an entrepreneur, and you're not just a marketing chick, so to speak. You're uh, you're a bit more than that. And and um, yeah, I mean, it, obviously the lesson here is that you chased your passions, and you 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 chimed in with what took your fancy at the time, and and you tried a number of things and something eventually stuck and you found you found you had real talent, real skill and real um, tenacity in the area that you're in right now. When did that actually start for you? When did you um, found um, uh, Taurus Marketing? So I founded Taurus in August 1995. Um, the 21st of August was the day my first child was born. So oh, wow. I was about, about you know, juggling a laptop and well done. attractions and thought that that Taurus was should be registered and um my absolute passion at that point was to contribute to my family um I was married to a lovely Englishman um uh, when that we're, we're, we're divorced now but he's the mother of my beautiful three children 
and I want the mother or the father. I'm, I'm both. Well, yeah, both, I suppose. <laughs> yes. Um, and, and so my, 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 the tenacity, passion, commitment was to to build a help build a life. I was an immigrant. I came from London, then via Hong Kong, living there, and then here. And my passion was that I was to contribute. And I, uh, uh, when my, my grandmother and great aunt founded a school that I went to. Um, and so my mother was a single mum, uh, a divorcee who worked. So my role model has always been a woman that worked yep. and a woman that contributed to the community and had a, had a absolute, um, no hesitation in doing the hard yards. So that's my default. That's, that's what I'm from and, and who I am. I'm a Torian, so I'm stubborn and bull headed and, tenacious and um and so that's how it started it started knowing that i had a skill that i could um put out on an hourly rate um and meanwhile juggle my three babies because mm -hmm. the biggest, biggest joy for me in life has been being a mummy and i've loved that role and um at the time I was working for an IT company and as soon as I got pregnant, they said, well, you'll, you'll be off then, won't you? So <laughs> they made it very clear that motherhood and full-time work wasn't going to, to work for them. And that was 25 years ago. Um, and so creating my own thing has given me the opportunity to be the best mum I could be. And then meanwhile, it's grown and it's, George, it's so exciting to have created something. I mean, we, we won, um, we were awarded best market. I've got it next to me. Best marketing and PR agency last year. Look, I've got, I've got it here to keep my spirits high through this this time. Um, and when things like that, fantastic, happen, it's just really exciting that you know we're still here. We're still going. Um, Twenty five years is a long time. Now, tell me. Usually, usually, Sharon, um, during difficult times, um, one of the most immediate. Um, cutbacks that companies undertake, uh, you know, let's cut out marketing, let's cut out consultancy fees, let's cut out, let's cut out all the supposedly superfluous stuff that's not, that doesn't have a direct link to, um, to sales growth. Um, so what are you finding at, uh, right this minute in the, in the, in the throes of COVID-19, the way that the, the last couple of months, do you, you're finding that the companies are actually staying the course and continuing on with marketing because they see how important it is. Mm -hmm. Or are you finding the, 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 the reverse that they're, they're cutting, cutting back? Yeah. So I think it's fair, George, to, to judge companies out there on the situation they're in. Um, yep. You've got some companies that just cannot, cannot operate right now physically. Mm. And from a regulation point of view, they've, they've been cut off at the mm. knees. Um, uh, I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong, but they, they just have nowhere to go. Um, and, and therefore, all the marketing in the world is not going to, going to save them. Um, but I'd like, I'd like to feel that marketing is, is the words like reputation and communication. And so they still have a job to do to hold that reputation and communication together for their networks so that when they do come through this and reinvent they're still in touch with people who care about them because in business, I don't know about you, but I'm in business because I care about people and because mm. I want to do the right thing. So, yes. so um, for those people, I think we have to just salute and, and pay credit to those people that are in that situation because that's a really, that's a really difficult place to be. Um, then there are the brands of course that are booming um, and, and almost having to, to hire people to keep up with inquiries um, Brands like Luxury Escapes, um, uh, travel companies have had, although they've been uh, um, uh, thumped, they've, they've had to have perhaps more people on call centres. Um, and so there are a variety of circumstances out there that I just want to acknowledge before I answer this. But I think the principle stays the same. If, a, if, if you are a business owner, you've got to, to look like you're open for business. And whatever your circumstances, you know, in a crisis, crisis 101 is to communicate and to have your team and your suppliers and your network knowing how you're going and whether or not you're there to provide help or not. So immediately this struck, we, we then went into, we, we created the COVID-19 uh, war cabinet in our mm -hmm. company 
um, who were selected out of the company um, for various reasons, age, experience, diverse cross-section. And we literally met twice a week to put in the communication and initiatives we needed to get through this. Um, and I'm, you know, I'm mature, so I've lived a long time through three continents and plenty of crises of my own. So crises is not new to me, but it's new to a lot of people um, and particularly younger than, than me. Um, and so it might be even more frightening. I think I've, you know, I've lived a long an, enough time to know that there is a procedure to go through with something like this. But there are yes. lots of people out there who don't have that experience and are going to be going through a crisis for the first time. Um, and they're the ones that need our help to understand that, um, you know, we will, we will get through this. Yeah, it's very true. I mean, <laughs> maturity does bring on some experiences and, uh, and I guess once you've been through a crisis once, the next time around, it's not, it doesn't, it doesn't land so hard, but, uh, but this is the first time for a lot of, uh, a lot of people, even up to their mid thirties, they've never experienced anything like it. It, but tell me, uh, tell our listeners and our viewers, um, what have, what has your company experienced in, in, and what have you seen out there amongst your clients that, that may have been, is of interest? Like um, something. Yes. What have I seen? So I, I pretty much seen almost everything because we've got a variety of clients across mm. a whole different, um, set of industries so for example my universities are struggling because of the lack of international students yes um my schools um so education technology has been booming because everybody suddenly has wanted to to lean on that um the availability of technology so i've seen some wonderful um Things like one of my clients has has released a free crisis module for their clients. So <laughs> what, what a wonderful thing that is! Um, I've got um, a, a, a mental health um, client, which has been fascinating because I think that everyone needs to deep dive at the moment and keep their health paramount, physical and mental. Um, and I'm really enjoying those brands who have come out of the woodwork and, and are communicating. I think the biggest message you can take to your um, viewers, George, is that right now is not the time to hide away. It's the time to be out there. Um, and every brand that is out there is going to get uh, in an empathetic way. And by the way, it's not a great time to sell right now. It's a better time to show empathy and help. Mm. Um, those are the examples that we're seeing that are really extraordinary. Look at Louis Vuitton making um, sanitizers and then making medical uh, gowns. Um, my local coffee shop becoming a little supermarket and um, you know, sto stocking eggs and things that, the toilet paper. <laughs> <laughs> the essentials. Seeing, seeing um, restaurants revert to takeaways and home delivery. Um, seeing on services that w were doubling in online suddenly now going mainstream online so what what COVID-19 has done for us which is actually a good you know if you could look at the plus side side of things is it's fast-tracked every trend that was on the way so suddenly by about seven eight years we've got the trends that were going to happen over there now happening here for business um, and that's exciting because it means that you've got a whole new view of, um, of industry and the way things are done. Online shopping has, has boomed, um, home delivery of alcohol, um, which we were just laughing about earlier. Uh, um, the way services and products are bought has certainly gone through 190, if not, you know, 100, 360 degree change. So for everybody listening, whatever state, you're in at the moment and whatever phase you're in there's opportunities in all of that for, for you right now yeah thank you sharon i mean uh, one of the one of the themes that have been uh, that has been popping up during previous uh, interviews is the the reluctance of business owners to just communicate to communicate the fact that they are undergoing some stress or you know that they're worried that they're 
that they they don't have any ideas on how to pivot their business. Um, and you nailed it when you said, you know, that it's a metaphor for life, like just be in communication, get, get in communication. One of the reasons why we're having this interview is to go out, is to send this out to people who, you know, are living in their silo and they're silent and they're suffering in silence. Um, yeah, but it needn't natural, be that way. It's a natural reaction, isn't it? When we're frightened. And I mean, I don't know about you, George, but I'm frightened. You know, I've been frightened. I sort of wake up. Um, it's, it's a frightening time. I'm anxious. Mm. I'm frightened. Mm -hmm. um, on the flip side, I'm also excited and, and brave. Um, all human and, emotions. All the human emotions. And when we're in situations like that, we've got to talk about it and share it yep. and help people to feel that they're not alone. And also help people to realize that, that, that there is actions, small little chips away at actions, one step at a time that can take them to where they want to be. Yeah. Yeah. Look, it, I mean, it's great advice. I mean, women have a tendency to be able to talk freely. Men, not so much. So you're breaking down, that, breaking down some of those barriers. Yeah, it, it takes a bit of time. But, you know, when men do start talking, it's actually therapeutic. It's a really good thing. And as you know, Sharon, um, you know, the, the business world is, it's not 50-50. We're not quite at um, pure gender equality. Not there yet. Yeah, no. um, have you found, have you found that it's been um, um, a real educational process for your clients to, to uh, deal with you uh, and your, your view on, on uh, the tone of voice that they should have? Um, well, we've stayed extra close to our clients. We're always close to clients, but we've stayed extra close. Um, and the feedback I've got about that is good. Um, we're, we're doing a Thursday, uh, free half an hour at one o'clock for our client base to come on to zoom and just share. And it's just right. so good to watch them help each other. Um, and I talk, talked about what it's like for me and I've always tried to make it a, 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 a a learning session so that yep. everyone goes away with something solid and good. Um, but equally we've all learned from each other. And then I, I do a professional girls one too. And um, those girls have dived in and are helping each other and supporting each other. And so if you do stay close to your clients and, and chat to them, you can find out what it is they need and also mm. how they can help you and how you can help them. So I do think it's a really, important time to stay close whereas it might feel like a time to hide away <laughs> well what 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 kind of apart from those um free online uh, get togethers i mean what other changes have you put in place that are that are going to prepare you i mean no you don't have a crystal ball you can't see the future but what you think might prepare you for when we come out of covid19 Okay, what, so, what so everyone, everyone that, that's listening needs to be more virtual, more mm. virtually capable. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm looking at my next office space where it has a dedicated studio and webinar, TV studio and webinar set mm -hmm. up. Um, uh, technology, working remotely, CRM, um, online purchasing software, um, remote project management software. All of the people that are in business right now need to be looking from office space to um, how company culture is going to run is, is, is changing on every, every single facet. And also, yeah. I don't know about anybody else, but I'm looking at my supplier contracts too. You know, why, why am I paying that for that? Um, and where should I be swapping my investment? So I very carefully examined the profit and loss of my business and made some movements into more of the virtual digital technology space that I possibly would have done further down the track, but I'm doing now. Um, uh, and I, I mean, how exciting for us as well as employers that we're going to have the pick of the crop in terms of careers. I, uh, we've been doing weekly letters. I've, I've been sending out literally a letter from me as a CEO once a week since this started. Um, which you can find on the COVID-19 page on the tourist site. Um, and we've been, we've been offering advice in that way. Um, and the feedback that we've been getting is very much that technology is going to drive 
our future. So sure. um, I think every, everyone out there needs to be looking at how how their business operates in, in that new normal. And that's not a threat, that's exciting. You know, it might be frightening and anxious making, but it's an opportunity. Um, and to be holding meetings with your team and your client base to find out and visualize what that looks like now would be a really good thing. And if, if viewers ha and listeners haven't done that yet, then it would be a great thing to do. Yeah, I, th I think you, you um it's quite an important point it is uh, it it's uh, it's exciting it's uh, you know the possibilities now have opened up for for many many businesses the ones that are really having a, a bit of a challenge is how to take advantage of what you've just said in the food in the food and beverage game so the the suppliers in that in that game the the, the whole supply chain mm -hmm. um yeah. you know we, we know the likes of coles woolies and aldi have taken off but the rest of the the rest of the supply chain is effectively stalled. You know, clubs yeah. are, clubs are closed, bars are closed, um, restaurants and cafes are closed, or they're opening up now. Um, mm. But but they've taken a really really big hit. It's very difficult. How would you say that they could translate their business or migrate their business into the online world in a way that um, keeps the revenue line up? Um. I, do you know what? I hope that everyone has more cash in the bank moving forward. Yeah, yeah. I hope that everybody has their, um, as the barefoot investor says, has hit, has their fire extinguisher fund in a much better way. It's a bit of a worry at how many businesses only had a week or two weeks of cash flow, um, and 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 that's not a COVID issue. That's a that's a management issue. That's a financial management issue. Yeah. Um, and, it, and it might be easier, you know, people might say, oh, that's easy for her to say, hello, you know, I'm a single mum. And um, you can either be living on the smell of an oily rag or you can cut your cloth and put mm. money in the bank mm. um, so that you've got cash for a rainy day. And the, the re the, my business is, uh, is, uh, is going because of that. So yeah. the financial management that I have instigated with the help of my advisors and with the discipline that, you know, you do go without, you, you don't have all the things that you might like every week, but you owe it to your, it's a business. Uh, you know, it's not a game. This is, I'm a director of a company and I have to take it absolutely seriously. Um, and so I'm proud of that. I'm proud that going into this, I knew I had a buffer. Now that buffer isn't never ending and you don't throw good mm. money after bad. Mm. But but that is what will will see us through. Um, yeah. I'm also lucky that I'm in a field where people do still want help. Um, so we are getting lots of inquiries and we are signing new business. So that's that's exciting, George. Even though we've had a bit of a change in our client base, yeah, yeah. You no, know, it, it's it's um, people still need us and they're coming to us, which is it's exciting. Uh, you're absolutely right, Sharon. I mean, having cash in the bank is is gold. Um, and too many businesses were skating on thin ice because they were, rather than become super efficient and super lean, they leaned on supplies to give them extended credit terms. Mm. And because um, that was easy, it was the low hanging fruit. And um, those industries, and I am talking about the food and beverage um, in, industries, um, have have really been hit hard because it created a, a ripple effect. Mm. You know, the, the the amount of extended credit out there is incredible and um and whether that's going to be collected in in due course remains to be seen i i don't think i don't think all of it will be <laughs> so yeah. and and george you know i'm only giving advice i'm not some angel or some financial no. wizard i'm only giving advice because i've been there before so it's only through experience that it's taught me that um you know there were times when i've been over leveraged and there's been times when when times are good, no one needs to be clever. Yeah. It's when times are bad that you need to be clever. And, and, and as I said earlier, you know, we've, we've lived, hopefully this, this event um, uh, will teach people to be cleverer moving forward and make better decisions. Um, and, and having money in the bank and also having a, a, a business that doesn't, uh, um, survive on something that is only you know even restaurants can do buy 10 meals and get get free dessert they can they can get they can put 
cash flow models in place. Well, I, I mean, I, that's what I do for a living, marketing and lead gen. They can put special offers together, but secure cash for the future. Um, so there's lots of ways where that will happen. And we're seeing that now, aren't we, with some of the restaurants, some of yeah. the, some of, some of the um, lovely uh, hotels I've stayed at before are, are emailing me now to pay now and get a discount, but perhaps not take that holiday for a while well that's all clever clever cash flow planning and that's mm -hmm. i mean I, I call that marketing but um it is actually good business it is indeed and uh and and for those businesses that actually could uh, wish to avail themselves of your services <laughs> how would they be able to get in touch with you uh, sharon oh we're, we're easy if you go to the tourist marketing site or just google us it'll have the phone number on the front of the site or you can fill in a form an inquiry form and we'll get back to you yeah so yeah we'd love to help george very that's much great. that's great so um, uh, just a final word of advice to uh, anyone in business out there um, is there anything you can share words of wisdom apart from um, have cash in the bank yeah i think well um i think we've said over communicate don't hide away and get out there and speak to people. Even mm -hmm. if, even if you're out of work at the moment and you're looking at what's going to happen next, you need to be in front of the people that need to hear from you. Um, I'd suggest, you know, that everyone takes care of their mental and physical health because if they don't do that, there isn't a future. So yeah, that's um, very important. plan within your families and within your loved ones in the spheres of influence that you've got to reach out and keep everybody as upbeat and as as fine as possible because um as i say without that there's no future and then a couple of you know red wine sessions with a with a <laughs> with a white white serviette and a pen to plan and map out the future with a few mates love that why not <laughs> I love that. Oh, I look forward to doing it with you, Sharon, one day, because uh, because uh, you know I'll need to map out my life too. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you bring the red wine, George. I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. Look, Sharon, I I can't thank you enough. I, I short and sharp, but it was great. It was great having you on here, and and um and I do hope that our listeners and our viewers get a lot out of this and and avail themselves of your services. I really hope they take advantage. Actually, I'm going to make a call out to them directly. Take advantage of the experience that Sharon brings to the table. She has an awesome marketing marketing machine behind her and she thinks outside of the box and beneficial for any business. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you, George. That's very gracious. Lots of love. Bye. Take care, Sharon.